Hello, welcome to the news broadcast daily. I'm following today's highlights. Party General Secretary Nguyen Phu Trọng talks with the National Coordinator of the Mexican Workers' Party. Vietnam and Brunei agree to further broaden and intensify their relations in the future. The National Nuclear Safety Council seeks technical standards for first nuclear power plant. General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam, Nguyen Phu Trọng, met with National Coordinator of the Mexican Workers' Party, PT, Alberto Anaya Gunteres, in Hanoi on November 28th. The PT leader is on a working visit to Vienna. During the meeting, Gutierrez applauded the significant achievements that Vietnam has made during the past years. He said he believes that the Communist Party of Vietnam will continue to lead the country and overcome any obstacles to successfully implement its renewal cause for socialism in a changing world. Gutierrez proposed some measures to further enhance solidarity, friendship and cooperation between the two parties. Applauding the PT leader's visit, Chung congratulated PT's successful election in July and spoke highly of the contributions that PT and Gutierrez have made in strengthening the friendship and cooperation between the two parties since the two parties established relationships 15 years ago. Chung and Gutierrez agreed to broaden the cooperation fields between the two parties. Earlier, the PT delegation held talks with the CPV delegation led by Huang Bing Quan, head of the CPV Central Committee's Commission for External Relations. The two sides sought measures to increase cooperation efficiency between the two parties and countries in the future. Vietnam and Brunei have agreed to further broaden and intensify their relations in the future. Relevant agencies of the two countries signed banking and petroleum cooperative documents during their state-level visit to Brunei by President Chiang Ten Sang on November 27. President Chiang Ten Sang met Brunei's Sultan Haji Hassanal Bolkia following the welcome ceremony. They agreed to promptly organize the first bilateral cooperation committee meeting to propose measures to strengthen cooperation in specific fields, especially in economics, trade, and investment. According to statistics, two-way trade reached around 403 million US dollars in the first nine months of this year, with 129 projects worth 4.9 billion US dollars. Brunei now ranks 12 of 92 countries and territories investing in Vietnam. Vietnam and Brunei will promote cooperation in potential areas, including agrofishery, oil and gas, labor, tourism, education, and transport. The leaders spoke highly of defense cooperation and agreed to consider the establishment of a hot light between their neighbor forces, as well as the signing of a cooperation agreement on crime prevention. They agreed that it is essential to ensure peace and stability in the region, more in time freedom, safety and security in this sea, and the settlement of disputes through peaceful means in accordance with international law, in particular the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Both sides stressed the necessity to fully observe declaration on the conduct of parties in this sea and work towards the signing of a code of conduct. The Ministry of Industry and Trade on November 27th officially launched a campaign to reduce energy consumption by industrial sectors and state agencies. It looks toward the building of a green economy. The campaign, which will run until 2015, aimed to cut national energy consumption by 5 to 8 percent, said the Ministry of Industry and Trade. The ministry considers the campaign to be one of the focuses of the National Programme on Energy Efficiency, as it is necessary to fulfill Vietnam's goal of building a green economy. With technical support from the Embassy of Denmark in Vietnam and international finance cooperation, the campaign will focus on raising awareness and supporting key energy consumers in making improvements. Um, over the last 10 years, uh, energy consumption in, or electricity consumption in particular in Vietnam has increased by about 400% uh, as, as Vietnam continues to grow and to industrialize. 
uh, Vietnam's uh, carbon dioxide emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions are growing by about 11% a year, making Vietnam one of the largest, uh, fastest growing emitters in the region. Um, one of the reasons or one of the principal reasons that we are uh, interested in energy efficiency, we're launching this national awareness campaign and we're supporting businesses uh, in improving their energy efficiency is both to mitigate. A variety of business oriented communication activities will be carried out to raise companies' awareness of energy efficiency benefits such as reductions in production costs, enhanced competitiveness and improvements in prestige and image. We strive to cut energy consumption by energy-hungry industries like steel and cement by 10% during 2012 to 15. In 2012 and 2013, the four most energy-hungry industries, including cement, steel, paper and chemical production, have been ordered to use energy-efficient equipment. All public high-rise buildings built in 2012 also have to obey energy efficiency regulations. Vietnam considers Japan its leading partner in foreign direct investment, FDI. It pledged to provide the best environment for Japanese investors. At the 6th Vietnam-Japan Economic Forum in Tokyo on November 27, Vietnamese Minister of Planning and Investment Bu Quang Vinh said, with 65 million people of working age, Vietnam provides a safe investment environment for Japanese businesses. They added that he has high hopes for the development prospect of the support industry, as well as public-private partnerships with the Japanese businesses. Former Panasonic Vietnam General Director Mitsuru Okada, who has 20 years' experience in business and investment in Vietnam, said that Vietnam is a good partner in the political, economic and cultural spheres of Japan. According to Okada, the support industry is very necessary for Vietnam and the country sees opportunities to attract Japanese investment in the sector. During the visit to Japan, from November 24th to December 1st, Minister Ving had working sections with leaders of the Japanese Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Land Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, and other organizations. The National Nuclear Safety Council highlighted technical standards to be met in the Ning Thuat nuclear power plant in second sessions in Hanoi on November 27th. Participants at the session agreed that employing international standards in an environment that is short of synchronized legal framework at the Ning Thua nuclear power plant are feasible and acceptable. Many countries imported technologies for their initial nuclear power projects. They also applied standards and guidelines of the supplier countries as well as international organizations such as the IAEA. According to Electricity of Vietnam, Vietnam has requested Japanese and Russian partners to prepare reports on standards to apply in the project. The documents are scheduled to be submitted by 2013. The Ministry of Science and Technology is also collecting opinions from other ministries, sectors and partners to complete a circular directing the appliance of nuclear power safety standards in Vietnam. The key principle of the circular is that foreign standards must be synchronized, complete and up-to-date. They must also suit the laws of Vietnam. International consultants will help Vietnam prepare synchronized standards. The EVN invested Ning Thua nuclear power project located in Phuc Xing commune, Thua Nam district, in the central coastal province of Ning Thua, is the first of its kind in Vietnam and has a total capacity of 2,000 megawatts. A national symposium highlighting the victory of Hanoi Dien Bien Phu battle in the air in 1972 took place in Hanoi on November 20th. We have more. Over 12 days and nights from December 18, armed forces in the north shot down 81 U.S. aircraft, including 34 B fighters, leading to the victory, which contributed to the end of U.S. bombing in the northern region, the signing of the Paris Accords, and U.S. troop withdrawal from Vietnam restoring peace in the country. Participants affirmed that the victory reflected the strategic vision of the party and President Ho Chi Minh and the sound, timely and creative leadership of the party's Central Committee, the Central Military Party Commission, 
and the Defense Ministry. The Hanoi Yit Binh Phu in the air victory was considered a ground-to-air warfare victory based on three forces with the air defense and air force service at the core. And this is the end of our news today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.